Good evening, mini friends and family. It is time for another story. Today, our story comes also from the land of Barely There. The name of this book is Persimone. And Persimone Parsnip is the eccentric otter that lives in the land of Barely There. She is a very rich otter but she has an odd riddle that she often says, I close my eyes and I look around, I look around, but it can't be found. All the creatures that live in the village try to solve the mysterious riddle. And it is only when the it of the riddle is found that Persimone promises to share more than just her collected wealth. Let's read. Farther than far and to the very edge of the horizon was a path bordered in lacy fern. If you followed that path in the early spring rains and hopped from puddle to puddle, you would find the land of Barely There. Barely There, where in the early spring the flowering trees hold their buds so tight afraid to release so much beauty in one tiny place. Barely There, where the last bird of winter and the first bird of spring loudly try to sing the rain away. If you followed that path as it wandered through the dripping forest, you would see it change from path to rutted road without pause or reflection. That road wound through barely there and eventually stopped in the square of a quaint little village the village sprawled upon the countryside like a lazy man on a couch. Here, a variety of folk wild their lives away. I were Wordworthy, the owner of the mercantile, Beulah and Buford, the woodcarvers, and Old Fiddler Bear, a musician of great reputation. Remember, we read about him last week. They all lived here. You know, the rich and the not-so-rich, in odd little cabins and cottages, the rich lived in town and the poor lived in Humble Hollow at the edge of the bare-boned Beggary Creek with its trickling bony fingers of water. Of all the houses that were built and barely there, there was none more odd than the old parsimony mansion. Years before, the halls had rung with music, laughter, and the rhythmic scuffing of dancing feet. A parsimony mansion had fallen on hard times. The windows were now shuttered and the grounds were in disrepair. It had, brought, it had been bought some years ago by a miserly otter called Persimony Parsnip. She was a very odd otter for she wore gowns sewn of old printed flower stacks and corn stalk binding. An odd place, old parsimony mansion lived in by an odd persimony parsnip whose life was a mystery, a riddle. If parsimony mansion was odd on the outside, what laid stored inside was odder still. For persimony parsnip was a saver, a finder of things disregarded or sold beneath value. There were old rough woven blankets, patched and scratchy, stacked high. There were cans of this and cans of that labeled, labels faded and dusty. Her crinkling skirts rustled down dusty halls. As with a lantern held high, she would take inventory of her possessions, searching for something misplaced. As her worn slipper, slippers shuffled, she often muttered these words. I close my eyes and look around. I look around, but it can't be found. Newspapers, cardboard, balls of string, all were counted and cared for in this odd mansion by this odd otter. She added to her treasures daily, for she was always on the move, searching, searching. And the riddle was that she didn't know what she searched for. On every given day, Persimone could be found looking and looking for that which she could never find. The kindly villagers tried to help her in her search, but when they asked what she was looking for, she always answered the same. I close my eyes and I look around. I look around, but it can't be found. Do you know what I'm looking for? 
Then, with a shake of her head, she would wander, looking here and there. What could she be looking for? No one knew, and everyone asked. Tisk tisk, they would say, as she shuffled by. Poor old Miss Parsnip. If the truth be known, she was anything but poor. In fact, it could be said she was the richest of the rich. Persimone chose to clutch her wealth in worn little hands, and she made her richness her poverty. So life went on in barely there, summer and fall. In the springtime, the rains fell and moistened the land, long parched by cold winter winds. Barren, dried clods of poor earth became rich when touched by the wealth of rain. This year was wealthier than most as the rain tried to drown the sorrow of winter past. The lightning flashed and thunder cracked and the folk of barely there rushed quickly from the overhang from overhang to porch. Even Persimone moved more quickly as she had an old newspaper above her head to, sh to shed the downpour. Like all things, a little can become a lot. Creeks became streams. Creeks became streams, became rivers, became raging torrents, and just like that, the land was flooded. Oh, and it was frightful. The river oozed at first like molasses over griddle cakes, and then it flowed faster still as the land became flooded. The river filled with uprooted trees and displaced folk who sadly sat on twisted tree limbs like floating spectators at some festive event. This was not, however, a festive event. This was a frightening flood of monstrous proportions. As the waters receded, all went back to a sense of normal as neighborhood, as neighbor helped neighbor clean up the mess. Some were not so fortunate as others. Down in old humble hollow, Beggary Creek had flooded its banks, and in a way, no, in a way, no one could have expected. Not one, not two, not even a few of the rickety homes survived the raging waters. Every humble home had been washed away. Even the Hart family, who had built their shack upon a great stump, were wiped out, devastated. No clothes, no food, no shelter. Everything was gone. The townsfolk took them in, one and all, and no one was abandoned. But there were so many families and so few empty places where they could say. Even the porch of the mercantile was used, and makeshift beds were strewn about like firewood on the hearth. But it was not enough as more and more were rescued. Finally, everyone gathered on the mercantile steps to discuss their plate. We need food and blankets. We need shelter. Oh, what are we to do? It was then that Fiddler, a wandering musician of some repute in the land of Barely There, remembered Persimone Parsnip and the things that she had collected and stored. Without further ado, he sloshed through the mud to old Parsimony Mansion. While Money Prince, with Money Prince left on the bleached, silvered steps, Fiddler rapped on the door. After a time, there came the clanking of bolt and lock being opened. Persimony looked out suspiciously through the door, for few had come to call before. What do you want? she croaked as she clutched her tattered shawl. Miss Parsnip, he said, hat in hand, we need your help. There was a terrible flood and folks have no home, nor blankets to keep them warm. Won't you open Persimony Mansion and take some of these folks in? Her eyes rolled as she muttered those familiar words. I close my eyes and I look around. I look around, but it can't be found. Do the homeless have what I've been searching for? She asked with knitted brow. If they do, they can come. If they don't, they can all stay away. And with that, she rudely slammed the door. Fiddler rushed back to the store, and with everyone gathered, he had told them about what the otter had said. What does this riddle mean? asked Father Hart. I close my eyes and look around. I look around, but it can't be found. Everyone thought and thought the whole night through, thinking of anything and everything that might be the answer to the riddle. They thought maybe it might be an old brooch. 
they thought it might be lost, a lost pocket watch. All were eliminated as Fiddler rushed to ask Miss Parsniff if this or that was what she was looking for. All was to no avail, for Persimony answered each question with the self-same riddle. It was late in the night, so late in fact that it was nearly morning, when from the back of the store stepped Fiddler. I know the answer. I know what she needs and what she has been searching for. It's so simple that she has disguised her need in the searching. With all the villagers and folk from around Humble Hollow gathered round, Fiddler told them the answer to Parsnip's riddle. Dawn's purpled light bathed the village in an eerie glow as everyone marched down the street to Parsimony Mansion. Once there, Fiddler rapped loudly on the door once again, and the group hushed. All could easily hear the shuffling and slippered feet of the crackling rustle of Persimony's printed dress. Lock bolts were slammed back and the door squeaked open. Miss Parsnip, Fiddler asked once more. Folks need a roof over their heads and blankets to keep them warm. Won't you take them in? The odd otter looked over the crowd and grumbled. I close my eyes and I look around. I look around, but it can't be found. Do you know what I am looking for? If you do, you can come in. If you don't, then you can all stay away. Then, to her surprise, one at a time, they came forward and whispered in her ear and gave her a quaint little hug. Without hesitation and with a gentle smile on her face, Persimony Parsnip let them in. That day, they changed the name of Persimony Mansion to Charity Hall, for it was soon filled with grace and laughter of all who lived inside. What was the secret to Persimony's riddle? What had that old Miss Parsnip searched for her whole life that was whispered to her warm heart? They gave no gift nor money to lend. They simply said, we'll be your friend. And that is what we all endlessly search for in the land of Barely There. The end. <laughs> well, friends, I hope you enjoyed our story for tonight, and I will see you next week.